Dan Davis, PJ Professional. Today we're going to look at the mental approach to golf. So a little bit longer video than normal. Uh, so get yourself comfortable. I uh, just wanted to start off really with sort of my experience with the mental game. I've struggled over the years, uh, like all golfers, um, sort of my mind wandering um, sort of ahead and sort of in the past. So I used to think a lot on the golf course about tee shots coming up and bad shots that I've hit previously. Um, it's very easy to forget a good shot. It's harder to forget a bad one. So um, I have struggled like like all golfers, sort of from time to time out on the golf course. It's a difficult aspect. It's not something you can see, uh, especially as a coach. So it's not like you can see a swing fault and fix a swing fault. The mental side is, is quite tricky. So we're going to cover quite a few things today. Um, so if you can take two or three things away, um, and work on them, try not to take it all away because it will just get a bit too uh, a bit too complicated. Um, it, yeah, it'll just overcomplicate it. So we've got <coughs> 10 things to look at. So the first thing is um, you need to make sure you're warmed up. So if you warmed up, uh, it often gets overlooked. Uh, it's going to give you confidence as well when you stand on the first tee that you know that you're sort of in the, almost, you're in the... The right state in terms of your body uh, so you've warmed up nicely so you've given yourself the best opportunity to hit a good shot um, if you don't warm up um, you have sort of half expecting a bad shot uh, how many times have you heard it from people who have played oh, I was I was okay after the sixth hole but after you've played six hole that's a third of your round your score quite easily could have been lost by then so um, it's just mentally preparing yourself, physically preparing yourself to then be able to put it together in your mind as well and be confident. Um, so, number one, make sure you warm up. Number two, technical thoughts versus feel. So, <clears throat> technical thoughts are really for the driving range. So, if you're working with your coach on something within the golf swing, um, those thoughts are fine when you're on the range. It doesn't matter on the range if you hit a bad shot, you learn from it. But when you're on the golf course, when you're practicing, what I like to get my players to do is that mechanical thought, whilst you're practicing, turn it into a feeling. And once it's in a feeling, then that feeling you can take out onto the golf course. So the range is for mechanical thoughts and the golf course is for a feel. Okay, Two very, very different things. <clears throat> that brings me on to point three, which is one swing thought per round, so one feeling really. So that practice you've done on the range, that feeling you can take out to the golf course, but really try hard not to change that feeling. So in terms of if it doesn't work on one particular shot, stick with it, rather than thinking, right, okay, that didn't work, let's try this, and then that may work for two holes and it doesn't, then you try something else, you get into a sort of a downward spiral. So one thought per round and really try and stick with that, it's helped me over the years. Number four is aim small and then you'll miss small. So if you're standing on a tee, so let's say take the first for instance, you've got a nice wide fairway, if you aim at the fairway, it's a pretty broad target, and if you miss the fairway, you're then in the semi-rough or the, or, the, um, or the rough or out of bounds, okay? So if you aim small, if you aim for I like to pick something in the tree line. So a point in the tree line that's in line with the right quarter of the fairway. Okay. Then if you miss the right hand side of the fairway, if, even if you bring it into a third or a quarter, like I said, is, I'll start that bit again, that didn't make sense. So if you've got four quarters, so you've got the middle section, and then you've got, so if you split the fairway into quarters, you've got the right quarter, middle right, middle left, and the left quarter. If you aim for the middle right quarter, if you miss that quarter, you could still end up on the fairway just right or just left of it. So if you aim small, there's a lot more chance of you missing small as well, which will help you score on the golf course. Number five, make sure you plan a strategy for the course, or so for, for each hole. And always start at the green and work back to the tee. So take a par four for instance, say it's 350 yards. If you want to be 150 yards away, you've got to hit your tee shot 200. And depending on the wind conditions and the ground conditions on the day, your shot is try and hit it 200 yards off the tee, which will leave you 150 into the green. Or if you want to go 
a little bit longer and leave it if it's firm and windy and it's downwind and you get out there 250 and leave yourself 100 yards. So always plan it from the green back to the tee. That's a really important one. <coughs> Bad hole mentality, which is a question was asked on Facebook. So if let's say if you struggle on the fourth hole, for instance, okay, and you normally hit driver or three wood, make it really easy. So let's say if you make, it's a par four, so if you make double bogey, if you make six, um, and that's the best score you can do on that hole because the tee shot causes you problems or the second shot causes you problems. Don't hit your drive off the tee here, let's say five on. If you aim to get on the green for three and take two putts, if you walk off with a bogey, number one, you've beat your double bogey score. And number two, it just makes the hole a lot more simple for you. So let's say if you play off 18, you've got a shot on every hole, you hit five iron off the tee, you hit seven iron second shot, you then hit nine iron into the green, two put, no problems, you haven't had to take out a longer club and put yourself into any kind of trouble or sort of chance any trouble as well. <clears throat> Number seven, it's a difficult one, concentration. Um, so this one really is make sure you've got enough food and water and take it around with you. Um, you're going to be out there for four to five hours, uh, five hours on a competition day. Um, potentially, let's say if you um, were at work, right? You're at work for let's say six hours. Okay, you'd have your break, your lunch, and potentially another break if you're there for longer than six hours. So you're eating three times. If you're on the golf course and all you take is a little bottle of water, that's not typical for your normal day. And you need that more that extra concentration for when you're on the golf course. So try and have little and often. So maybe every odd hole on the course you have either something to drink or something to eat so on three five seven nine eleven thirteen fifteen <coughs> um, and seventeen so just that consistent um, intake of food and water just to keep you hydrated and some fuel in your body as well um, <coughs> so number eight is confidence so <clears throat> confidence is a difficult one if it's in a sorry so confidence in an area of the game which you don't like or you struggle with um, you've got two options really for me as I see it number one you avoid it in your plan so let's say if you, your bad shot is between 40 and 60 yards in your plan when you're putting your strategy together don't include it that's number one okay the better version of the two is number two which is if your bad shot 60 to 40 yards go and practice it get confident at playing the shot in a relaxed environment and then when you come to play the shot in competitions you'll be a hell of a lot more confident than neglecting it in your practice because you don't like it and then when you get it on the golf course you're panicking and you're almost sort of just backing off being really sort of not confident with the shot and it's going to result in a bad shot so Go away, practice it, work really hard on the area of your game that you're not very good at, because everybody can't be fantastic at every element of the game. Work really hard on what you're bad at, and then you'll get more confidence in it. It's a, it's a difficult one, um, and it will take time, but um, the more you practice in the area that you struggle with, uh, the more confidence you'll have long term. <clears throat> so, number nine is golf's only a game. So this lockdown period has made a lot of people, including myself, appreciate things a lot more and activities that we were able to do before that we can't do now. Um, so when you're on the golf course, go and enjoy it, rather than stressing about every single shot you've hit or you're about to hit and working yourself up and ultimately then you don't enjoy the game. So just try and go out and enjoy it. Very difficult to do sometimes if you're having a bad day, but enjoy it as much as you can. Um, so just let a bad shot go so if you've hit a bad shot forget about it and then worry about the shot that's in front of you so you've got to have that present mind mentality so just be thinking about the shot that you're playing at that time it's very very easy to get sort of thinking about let's say you're playing you've got a good score going you're playing 13 and you don't like the 17th tee shot you don't want to be spending three, four holes thinking about that tee shot that you're dreading, and then that will take your concentration off the shots that you're about to play. So 
it's difficult to do. Um, it's not an easy thing at all, but what you've got to try and focus is the shot that's in front of you. And if you start thinking about a shot that you've hit in the past or one that you've got to hit in the future, then just bring your mind back and think, right, okay, let's focus on the shot I'm playing at the minute. I'll worry about the shot on the 17th tee shot when I'm standing on the 17th tee. Um, it's, it is difficult to do, uh, but you've just got to try and catch your mind when it starts to wonder. Um, that's the best bit of advice I can give on that one. I've had it loads of times in the past where I've got a good, good score going and coming to sort of, especially at the golf course where I'm at the chase, um, that 17th tee shot I'm not too much of a fan of. Why? I don't know. But I'd be thinking about, I could be thinking about 17th tee shot when I'm playing the 16th because the 16th is an easier par four. It should be pretty simple, um, sort of, and for me anyway, an iron off the tee and a wedge into the green. And if I take my mind off that hole, quite easy to hit a bad tee shot, put myself in trouble in one of the bunks on the left-hand side, um, or behind a tree, and then end up making bogey or double bogey. So always got to try and be in that present moment. Um, great book recommendation would be Bob Rotella, which is golf. Golf's not a game of perfect. Um, it's a great way of thinking, he explains a few stories in there, uh, but during lockdown if you can uh, get hold of a copy of that, um, I think you get it with an audio book or, um, or in paper, whichever is your preference, um, give it a read while you've got a bit of time there and that will really help your mental approach, it really did really help mine after reading it. So I hope those mental approach kind of concepts help you, any questions drop them in the comments below. Um, I'd like to get your take on this slightly different style of video that I'm used to doing, so uh, any feedback would be appreciated, and see you all soon.